Well, it's a quiet night tonight outside of this home and not far from here. There's another man who lives in the area who says he met and talked with Omar Martin over the last decade. He was barely uh, out of his teens when I first met him. Mohammed Malik says he met Omar Martin in 2006. They attended the same Islamic Center in Fort Pierce and developed a friendship over the years. He came across as, as, as a normal person. He was an introvert. Uh, but most of our, our conversations were, you know, worship related, uh, nothing radical, nothing homophobic. But Malik says Mateen made some comments a few years ago that concerned him. You think you are safe, you are not safe. Another man who attended their mosque, Mona Mohammed Abu Salah, became the first American born suicide bomber after he drove a truck full of explosives into a government office in Syria. We later learned that he was radicalized watching videos of Anwar uh, Al Waliki, who is a radical cleric. And uh, when uh, Omar Mateen mentioned his name, that he had watched videos of uh, Anwar al-Waliki as well, uh, my reaction to him was what he thought of the videos, and he told me they were very powerful. Malik says Mateen's comments raised red flags, and he called the FBI and even kept in contact with the agent. I kept in contact with Omar, and I kept my ears open for anything that may come up. Uh, but nothing had come up. Malik says words can't explain when he heard Mateen was identified as the shooter in the Orlando nightclub. Very shocked and disturbed. He says he wishes he could have done something to prevent the mass shooting. You think to yourself, what else could have I done to save, save a life? They say there's always a black sheep in the family, so I guess he was the black sheep in his family. And Malik says he last spoke with Omar Mateen last month. He says Mateen was talking about a recent family trip to Orlando and how he liked the local mosque there. We're live in Port St. Lucie. Ted YWPBF 25 News.